Is a joke now and then or a little lightheartedness allowed when appropriate? Now, I'm assuming they mean um, in a classroom setting, is it joking around in the classroom setting appropriate? And I, I think it really depends on, well, who's doing the joke? Is it the instructor or is it the student? But uh, when you did your Wing Chun classes, what was what was the formality like uh, when you guys were on oh, the mat? Well, yeah, I mean, the wing, it was it was a, a adult class only. And uh, when we did it, it was a lot of humor, a lot of joking, a lot of, you know, when and when the instructor is, is is talking, he would be very humorous and joke and and fighting. But you know, it was a very rowdy a bunch of guys actually, you know, fighting. So it, it you know, it it would be one of those things where you would kick each other, trying to see if you can make each other fart louder. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of one of those things, you know, or uh, you know, hitting each other. Whoever you know, if you if you got your other opponent to throw up. You're the winner, you know. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of a lot of joking. So, but you know, if you're, you know, if you're a kid going, through, you know, if you're a more traditional school where you know there's, you know, fifty fifty other kids and stuff, I, you know, that's where I, I believe that you know you, you should be a lot more serious. Maybe joke if you're separated to just you know spar off and one on one to just lighten the mood. So. Not so tense, especially if you're trying to teach, if you're doing one-on-one -on -one and you're trying to teach someone a technique and they're getting frustrated, I think that's when a little humor, a little, a little humor to the situation to, to relieve them of their frustration will actually help. And I find that that actually is where the good thing of joking in front of the whole class to distract them. I don't, I don't like that unless because humor is it's so hard to pause. I would only do it. I would basically my thing with joking is more one on one. You're trying to teach someone a technique, and they're getting frustrated. Or even even sometimes even when you're getting frustrated, that's a big thing. If you're starting to get frustrated with the technique and and you just can't get it, and you start building up, sometimes you know stop. Do a joke to make them laugh. You laugh. Gets that extra second in of calming down. Because you don't want to get frustrated out of somebody who's trying to teach you and help you. That, that's the worst. Because yeah. you're mad at yourself. No, that's actually a great point. So adding levity into a stressful situation can be beneficial. Um, I, I think it really depends on the school. Because, I mean, you've got some traditional schools, especially, you know, if they've got a Japanese or Okinawan background where it's serious. Like, you don't crack a joke. It's considered disrespectful. I mean, there's a lot of schools where you don't even ask questions. So if you're in that type of environment, I wouldn't start using humor out of out of turn um but it can go the other way too i mean in, in my personal experience my first instructor our classes it was a bunch of teenagers um things were kept kind of on a lighter tone i mean it was a serious class we couldn't goof around but our instructor would would crack a joke every once in a while or if we got like you said you, you try to like throw a little bit of humor in whether you want to raise levity or add some levity that that works too but it can go to the other extreme because i had another instructor who spent a lot of time starting off with humor and it started to get inappropriate and the next thing we know mm. half the class became a stand-up for criticizing and the humor started being directed at other practitioners it was kind of getting uncomfortable so there's definitely a line to cross i i don't think it should be allowed to the point where it becomes detracting from the class or the lesson at hand no, it, it, and that's true too. Because sometimes you know, the, the you go to class, and there's some people that go to class and they're just do, doing to get out. Especially adult class, there's some guys that are just they're getting out just to get away from their you know their families for a moment, or even girls imagine too, you know, just to get out and get away from their husbands or their families or or whoever it is, and just you know they're using it as a social happy hour, not really that serious about it. There, there's a lot of people like that, and then it become, and it, and it can drop the whole whole class participation down drastically. Like, so if you use humor in the right way, I think it's beneficial. Like, actually, there was another incident I was thinking about. I had a, another guy I take Wong Chung with. He, um, actually, you, you know him very well. His actually name is Dan too. But we would do basically a technique, and one of those things where if we drop our hand, drop our gate, you know, you're supposed to go and get get punched well instead of punching him instead of, well it was, actually he was doing it to me instead of punching me he would give me a nipple twist he would grab my nipples and twist it <laughs> and it's funny it laughs but let me tell you you do it you know three or four times you don't drop your hand 
<laughs> those it's hands not stay just, up. It, it's not just funny. It's also one of those things where, you know, the, it, you, you laugh, but you're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. You know, it's one thing to get popped six times. There's another thing to get in front of everyone laughing as your nipples getting twisted. So, yeah. So humor well, can be used as a great lesson to remember things if you do it. Oh right. yeah. You know, great I, a great joke, great. You know, so if you're trying to teach someone, you know, oh, keep your hands up. You know, if you just get slapped in the face ten times, they might not remember as much as if you, you know, if you poke them, in, you know, pretend to poke them in the eye. You know, don't really poke people in the eyes, but you know, give them the three stooges, poke them in the eye, hit them with that. It's one of those things where it just ingrains it in a different part of their brain that helps them to be like, oh yeah, all right, when I keep my hands up, keep my hands low. When you're doing when you're doing this drill, you know, move from here to here, watch this side. So humor is very useful in that aspect. Agreed. And Michael's agreeing with you, too. He goes, I'd like to know why students are taking the art because you have a Zach is saying that some people are not there for self-defense so much, but discipline or, or just for the friends in the workout. Knowing knowing that allows you to know when to push them to, pro to progress. So, yeah. So knowing why they're there is a good indicator of where that line is drawn. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and, um, it, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, that's, it's, it's hard because everyone's there for different reasons, you know? Exactly. And I like, what you, like in, uh, we didn't do the nipple twist in class, but when I was teaching the kids, the kids are so forgetful. I mean, you talk about young kids, five, six, seven, eight, you know, they're learning coordination still. So for them to always have this notion of keeping their hands up, it has to be repeated, repeated, repeated. And the one thing I would just do is walk around the class, like if we're doing drills or doing punches in the air, um, they're short. I'm tall. If they, if one of the kids dropped their hands, my hand was at the level. I just, I just grabbed their face and took a step with them and made them take a step back. And they were like, it throws them for a second. I'm like, you should, hands should have been up. And I just bring it up and I just grab it. I'm like, if I can grab your face, can you imagine what, you know, your opponent's going to be able to do. Oh, so oh yeah. It's, you just, you just take them one step out of their comfort zone. And they kind of like get shaken up by it. But yeah, it's, it's a conditioning aspect. Yeah. I mean, you've taught kids way more than I have ever have taught kids. So, I mean, I ask it, let me ask you the question. Did, did you find humor as a, as a good tool to teach kids? In certain situations. Yes, in certain situations, yes, because there's times too when you're when you're um, doing an instruction, and that's one thing you got to balance out because there's drills you could teach, and I'll sit them down and talk to them. But if you're going to sit them down and talk to them for about a minute or two, that's fine. If it's going to be ten minutes, you're going to lose their attention. So mm -hmm. sometimes humor can break it up. Or if there's a kid that's struggling in class, one of the things I would like to do is if he was kind of struggling or who didn't have the full attention, I would actually call them up to the front of the class to demonstrate a technique. So I would hold the pad, and I would. Um, like, or hold my hand up and I'll let them do a punch. I'm like, well, okay, that's pretty good, but like, let's put a little bit more rotation into it, whatever. And then they would hit me a second time and I would pretend like they just like slam my hand with a hammer. I'd be like, oh my God, ow, wow. Just like, woo, Superman, watch it there. And a smile will crack on their face. So if you can kind of get them to break, whether they're not paying attention or they're nervous or their mind somewhere else, sometimes a little thing like that can kind of snap them out of it or to make them feel good too. Cause then, you know, now you've just shown them in front of the class. Oh no, I just hurt Mr. Dan. Ooh, I'm good. You know? So sometimes uh, found effective effectiveness in that, but there's also a drawback too when you've got a class full of twenty kids and mm. a joke cracks, especially if a kid cracks a joke and they all start laughing. You got to get that under control quick, or or the whole class is going to unravel. So yeah, it's it's finding the time and place for it. But I did find um, humor can be, especially with children, humor can be a good tool when it reinforces something or as a confidence booster or just like you said, add some levity to uh, material that might be a little bit dull for an eight year old to listen to for 10 minutes. So I think it's, it's a good little um, tension breaker. Yeah, I can see that. Like I said, I am as more being more adult classes. Like I said, I, I find it more of useful, especially when people get frustrated. It, that would be the only time I would ever like, say if you're, a oh, good example is, is say if you're having a sparring day, and everyone's around and watching someone spar and watching you spar or better that you're watching someone spar and they're having a tough time at it for whatever reason that day they're not making and they're getting frustrated and they're getting mad and at that point in time i think you know if you can get a good funny joke in where you can get everyone to laugh you can't not as anyone expenses that's the other thing you, you know yeah. especially if you can do it where it's you kind of direct attention get them to calm down for 10 seconds because it, it, sometimes in sparring, you know, it gets a little too heated and, it, you know, and, and the person's getting frustrated and getting mad, not necessarily, you know, 
it's just whatever reason he can't he can't get a combination in and he keeps getting popped on this combination and he keeps trying it because they want to learn it and next thing you know they're going to end up actually fighting because over something stupid you know or whatever and if you can sometimes tell a good joke get everyone to laugh and everyone to come down to, to okay you know all right de-escalate the situation i think that's where humor is really good as a teaching tool in martial arts is to remember everyone in the in the dojo is on the same you know on the same page you're all trying to learn you're all different levels and you're all mm -hmm. trying to get together versus you know you know yeah. start i mean because let's face it you you get you know we're, we're training sometimes to get you know training ourselves to get popped 50 times in the face and get popped in the stomach and and hit you, you know your tension goes up you get you get <laughs> mad <laughs> Oh, yeah. so, and you get mad, for, you know, and, and you, you sometimes you have to have your anger gets, you know, you put it on somebody else, you know, and you need to take a step back from it and, instead of doing something stupid where, you know, well, you know, that's it. This time I'm going to kick him in the balls. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you mentioned, Spari, uh, when, when, when um, Mr. Alex, let's say Alex, good mm -hmm. friend, good friend of this channel, he, he will hold sparring days and we will go and spar there. And the one main rule is it's all egos outside the door. We're there to have fun. We're there to kind of just practice, work out with each other. So there's a lot of humor flying. There's some fun trash talking, but it's always got that levity. It's never gotten to the point where, like you said, you start fighting, you start getting tense where people actually start to really fight. There's always a sense of we're here, we're having fun. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, you got me in the face. I'm going to crack a joke about how good your, your, your foot pad tasted. You know, it's always stuff like that. So uh, it, it definitely can be a good uh, bar to set for controlling whatever level of intensity you want for the classroom. Yeah. But the, the number one thing I think you got to also watch out with the humor is not to be where it's um, you're, you're, you're basically attacking someone with the humor or, are degrading someone's self-esteem or point of view with the humor it's very easy to do that you know yeah. um you know it's very easy to like if someone accidentally slips and falls on their butt and looks like a moron because he's trying to do a kick and just because of anything the last video you got to be careful about making too much fun of that and too many times because you you also don't want to yeah. It's not the fact is, you know, like, okay, hey, martial art, you're supposed to learn, be tough and everything like that. But also, too, is they're there for they're there for a reason. You know, they're they're not there to get, you know, they're not there to get emotionally beat up. They're they're there to get, you know, uh, learn how to defend themselves and, 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 and get physically beat up, not emotionally, <laughs> I should say. And that gets complicated. Agreed. And Michael actually uh, touches on what I was talking about with the work with the kids. He said sometimes, um, sometimes humor helps break the ice or something, but the humor can then be a trigger that sends them down a goofy road, mm -hmm. and that is hard to pull them back from, um, because that one kid can turn into several and just be a distraction. So yeah, there's definitely that domino effect there to be cautious about. So I like to use it, like I said, when I brought the kid up, I'd like to use it in that instance. But you do have to be careful when it's in the classroom setting because it, it absolutely is a cascading effect, and once you lose that control. It, you're going to lose 10 minutes of your class just trying to get it back. Yeah. See, yeah. Like I said, you have far more experience doing, you know, kids teaching kids than I do, you know, mm. yeah. I, at most, you know, one or two kids for a short period of time. I don't know how you do like 50 kids in a room. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not unlike the prison question is you have to identify who can handle what, who's appropriate for what, what you, what you can teach the who, because they can find be the ruthless. biggest kid and take the biggest kid down to the first. <laughs> yeah. Joke. That's not a lie. <laughs> So this clip is an excerpt from one of our recent Art of One Dojo live episodes in which we talked about the martial arts and whether or not they should be allowed or taught in the prison system. Now, I'm going to challenge you on this topic right here on your beliefs. Do you believe that the martial arts should be taught or should not be taught? We look at it from both angles. So you tell me what you think. Should the martial arts be allowed in prison?